Keyboard shortcuts allow us to simply use a single or combination of keys to quickly perform a particular function or toggle a setting. They are really important because they can dramatically speed up your workflow when it comes to editing video. And in this video, I'm gonna quickly run you through my favorite 10 keyboard shortcuts for DaVinci Resolve that I use every day when editing videos. Oh, and do stay tuned because all the way through, I've got loads of little bonus shortcuts sprinkled throughout the video for you as well. Let's jump on in. One of the first keyboard shortcuts I think you should know is how to quickly navigate around when reviewing clips in the source viewer or in the timeline. There are three main keys to pay attention to, and that's the J, K, and L keys. Pressing the L key plays forward, pressing the J key plays in reverse, and pressing the K key stops the playback. And as a little bonus here, if you tap multiple times on either the J or the L keys, then you can multiply the playback speed to speed it up or to slow it down again. This makes moving quickly through the clip or timeline very easy indeed. It gets even more useful though, as if you hold down the K and then tap either the J or the L keys, you'll navigate a frame at a time in either direction. Holding down K and then either J or L as well actually plays forward or backwards in slow motion. So now there's no excuses or reaching for the arrow keys to nudge the playhead forward or backward, which again will keep you sped up while you're editing video. Often you need to insert an edit point or cut a clip in half. Now, you could mouse over to the blade tool, select it, and then go ahead and make your cut, but this is just too slow. There are actually two shortcuts here that you could use. Either Command or Control on a PC plus the B key will activate the razor tool, and that will immediately cut the clips under the playhead. Now, if no clip is selected, then it will cut all the clips in the timeline with tracks that have auto track selection turned on. If you'd like to know more about auto track selection, then do let me know in the comments below, and I'll be able to do a video about it for you and show you how it's such a powerful tool. But if you just select a clip and then apply the shortcut, that will cut the clip regardless of the auto track selector status. There's actually a shortcut coming up later on that's gonna help you with selecting clips. Now, I said that there were two shortcuts and the other is split clip, which is command or control plus backslash. This works exactly the same way as the razor, but I just prefer it because it's easier for me to press on the keyboard. As a little bonus to all of this, if you've made a cut or split a clip or series of clips, then you can use the shortcut Option or Alt on a PC plus backslash to join or delete the edit point for the clip either on or to the left of the playhead. Remember, this won't work if you've trimmed the clip in any way as it will only work on through edits and these are indicated by dotted lines on the edit point rather than the solid line as indicated here. Sometimes you need to jump to the nearest edit point or cut in the timeline, and a great way to do this is to select the nearest edit point to the playhead. The shortcut for this is simply V on the keyboard. Very simple indeed. This will not differentiate between video or audio edit points though, so you can fancy this up by either using Option or Alt plus E to select the nearest video edit point, or Shift plus E to select the nearest audio edit point. So you've used the previous shortcut to select the nearest edit point, but it's not selected the correct edit point type. What I mean by that is that it's selected the in point of the following clip, not the out point of the first clip, or it's selected either in or out rather than both, which is known as a roll edit. That's annoying, right? Because now you have to reach for your mouse to select the right edit point type. Well, number four of my must-know shortcuts for DaVinci Resolve 18 in order to speed up your video editing is the U key. Simply press this once you've selected your edit point to toggle between the different edit point types. If you'd like to take that further, then you can add Option or Alt to the U key to toggle between video and audio, video only, or audio only edit points. And that's it, another little bonus shortcut for you. This one's really simple, but it saves your hands a lot of travel time. And of course, that's the main goal for all shortcuts, and it saves you vital seconds over the course of an edit. The default mode for your editing is the selection mode, and it's activated using the A key on the keyboard. In this mode, when you edit and trim in the timeline, you'll not affect the duration of the timeline as DaVinci Resolve will leave gaps or overwrite footage as you trim or position clips in the timeline. It's a great mode for general editing, but there are lots of occasions where you might need a different response. And this is where the trim edit mode comes in. And this is activated using the T key on the keyboard. In trim edit mode, you'll notice that the timeline duration is affected as trimming or repositioning clips does not leave gaps or overwrite footage, but dynamically shifts the clips up and down the timeline as required. This mode alone, once mastered, can save an incredible amount of time when editing and minimize mouse movements and hand travel. One thing to note though, is that in trim edit mode, you cannot move clips around in the timeline. 
Okay, just gonna take a quick pause there to check in with you. Everything making sense? Now, remember that there are literally thousands of possible functions and shortcuts that I could be focusing on in this video, so it's impossible to feature them all. These are just my favorites that I use regularly to speed up my video editing on a daily basis. Now, before we dive back in for the remaining five shortcuts, if you're interested in learning more about learning DaVinci Resolve, then you might want to check out the links in the description below. If you're a beginner video editor and new to Resolve, or maybe you're just switching from a different application, then we have a great online course that can bring you up to speed. It's called the Beginner's Guide to DaVinci Resolve, and you can currently get that with 40% off using the discount code DVR40OFF at the checkout. You'll find details more about it here and in the video description. Okay, that said, let's get on to keyboard shortcut number six. You've probably been there too, where you've got the clip in just the right place or adjusted your trim to almost where you need it, only to realize that you have to go a frame more in either direction. However, especially when you're zoomed out or with snapping turned on, this can be quite fiddly, requiring you to zoom in and waste a lot of time. Now this is where knowing the nudge keyboard command comes in very handy. By using the comma or the full stop key or the greater than less than key, you can move your selected clip or edit point one frame in either direction. If you want to move forward a few frames or multiple frames at a time, then add the shift key to either of those commands and you'll move a predetermined set of frames forward or back. And this can be configured in the preferences under the user tab in the editing menu under the fast nudge options. As a little bonus as well, if you're in the Fairlight page, you can actually have a keyboard command set up so that when you do nudge, you can nudge at subframe level as well. Earlier in the video, I mentioned we'd cycle back to a keyboard shortcut that would help in selecting clips in the timeline, and that's Shift plus V. And this simply selects the clip under the playhead. Well, technically it selects the nearest clip to the playhead, but of course that tends to be the one that's under it. And it works from Video Track 1 upwards. So it's really important to remember that if you're trying to select the nearest clip to the playhead on Video Track 3, then you need to turn off Auto Track Selection for Video 1 and 2. And you can do this very quickly using another keyboard shortcut, Option or Alt plus F1 or F2, to toggle on or off Auto Selection for those video tracks. Now that's another little bonus shortcut for you there. Now remember, this main keyboard shortcut will not only select the nearest clips, but it will also select gaps as well. If you find yourself in a position where you're making an edit and you're not in trim edit mode and you leave yourself a gap in the timeline and you want to close that up, but you don't want the following clips to lose their association with one another down the line, then you've got a couple of options. One thing you could do would be to zoom out all the way, marquee select all of the clips after the playhead and nudge them all closer up, or you could use the shortcut to select clips forward to do this instead. Now this is the Y key. So pressing Y will actually select everything forward on that track. And that's the one where the track destination selection is set to, so be careful about that. Or you can use Option or Alt plus Y to select everything on all tracks forward of the playhead. I use this one almost all the time. Also, as another bonus for you, you can select clips backwards as well using Y, but this time adding Command or Control to that shortcut. This shortcut is a real time saver too. When trimming clips, simply use the playhead to indicate the point at which you'd like to trim the start or end of a clip to, and then press either shift open brackets to trim the start, or shift close bracket to trim the end of the clip to the playhead. If you haven't got a clip selected, then it will actually trim the start or ends of all the clips under the playhead. This is only for tracks that have auto track selection turned on. But if you have a clip selected, it will perform the command on just that clip. Now, if you're in trim edit mode, then this shortcut will ripple the following clips on the timeline. And if you're not, then it won't, and it will leave gaps. However, if you're in selection mode, but would like the clips to ripple, rather than switching to trim edit mode first, simply add the command or control key to this shortcut, and it will add the ripple action, even though you are still in the selection mode. And that is another bonus tip for you there. My final shortcut is a very underrated one, and one that I bet many of you don't use all that often. It's called Play Around, and you access it using the forward slash key. What it does is automatically backs the playhead up from its current position by a predetermined set of frames, and then plays forward from that point for a predetermined number of frames past the playhead's original position, and then it stops playback and resets the playhead. I think of this a little bit like a macro, where one button press sets off a chain reaction of commands. Think about it. One button press saves you three or four button presses plus some mouse movement. If you're not already using it, I bet you will be after this. Oh, and as a final bonus for you, there are other variations of the play around feature too. If you head up to the playback menu, you'll see that as well as the play around function, you'll see there are options to also play around the current frame, clip, in and out points, and even play into out. 
really useful to know about these options when you're quickly wanting to review your trim, the impact of an effect, or an adjustment in the inspector. If you head up to the preferences, you can also change the predetermined amount of frames that the play around command uses by adjusting the pre and post roll parameters, which by default are set to two seconds. There we go, 10 essential DaVinci Resolve keyboard shortcuts that I'd highly recommend you commit to memory to help you speed up your video editing workflow in DaVinci Resolve. Let me know in the comments section which was your favorite or perhaps you think I've missed one that you use all the time and you think helps speed up your video editing. If that's the case, leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. But that's the end of this video though, so please do remember to like the video before you leave. And if you'd like to watch another video from me, then you'll get some suggestions on the screen in just a second. Do consider supporting the channel by subscribing and make sure your notifications are turned on so you will be the first to know about new videos as they get released. That's all from me though. Hope to see you in the next video. Until then, take care.